and girls, happy Monday. It is April 20th today, and we wrapped up Unit 9, which was all about fractions on Thursday. You did an independent math task, which was kind of like a mini test, and so that means that we are all set to head into Unit 10, which is actually going to be an introduction to multiplication. So today's objective should actually sound pretty familiar to you because it's a topic that we talked about at the beginning of the school year. Um, maybe sometime in September or even October. Um, so as I'm reading the objective, you might be thinking to yourself, oh wait, I totally remember what Ms. Garcia is talking about. And if you do, then that's great because it's going to be super helpful for you um, in this unit. And if you don't remember what I'm talking about in the objective today, that is also totally fine. That's exactly why we're starting off with a little bit of review. So I'm going to start by reading the objective and then I'm going to give you a chance to read it back to me. All right? Okay. Our objective says, today I will make groups to determine if the set has an odd or even number of objects. So your turn. Today I will make groups to determine if a set has an odd or even number of objects. Great. Now, that brings me to our vocabulary words, which we have two today. So, we have the word even number. Can everybody say even number? Great. And an even number is just a number that can be divided into pairs. So, I have some magnets here. I have some magnets here. And I'm going to show you what this would look like. Now, you might be flashing back in your memory to the beginning of the year when we were learning about odd and even numbers and we had actually pictures of friends' faces taped up to our math board. And we had some friends who were sad because they didn't have a partner. And I want to say that that was Ilona, but I'm not sure. Um, but poor Ilona had no partner, so she was so sad. So I'm going to show you what this looks like when we pair up objects um, in a group into pairs to see if it's even or odd. So just placing these magnets actually side by side. And you can see that I've actually organized these magnets into rows. Okay, so I have three rows and then two columns. That just helps me keep my magnets really organized. Um, and then I'm gonna connect them with a line just to make sure that in fact they do partner up. So I can see that all of my magnets have a partner, which means that the number six, that's how many magnets I have here on the board, is an even number. So none of my magnets are left without a partner. Um, much happier than Ilona felt when we partnered up our faces on the board. Um, and so, Anytime that we are able to pair objects or people or things into equal pairs um, with a nothing left over, that means that it's even, okay? Now, the next word we have is odd number. Can you say odd number? Great. And an odd number is a number that has a leftover when divided into pairs. So again, I have some magnets here. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did for the number six, um, but this time it's a different number. So we're going to see what it looks like if it's odd. I'm just putting my magnets side by side. I have two columns. That's not going to change. At this point, I have four rows. Oh. And then that's all the magnets that I have. So I ended up with one, two, three, four, five rows. And I ended up with one, two columns. Now, just by looking at my rows and my columns, you can see that they're not even. This is definitely an odd number. But I connect my magnets anyway just to make sure that I'm not misseeing. Oh, here's Ilona without a partner. Um... 
And so that means that nine, which is how many magnets I have here on the board, is an odd number because one of our magnets has been left out. All right, so now that I have gone over our objective and our important vocabulary words for today, I'm going to model a couple of problems. So number one in my math journal says, is the number 11 odd or even? So I actually collected some puffs, 11 of them, and I am going to separate them into groups of two. So one, two. One, two. They're so naughty. They're rolling all over the place. One, two. One, two. One, two. And then womp, womp, one left over. So I can see that I have divided my puffs into rows and columns to help me keep them organized and to make it really clear which ones line up with which ones. And I can see that at the end, there is the 11th, which is without a partner. And so that means that 11 is odd. So the next problem, number two says, is the number four odd or even? So I'm going to do the same thing that I did for number one, but instead of using puffs, I'm actually going to be using some candy from an Easter basket that Mrs. Forda made for me because she's so nice. So I have one, two. Remember, I'm pairing them up. One. Two. So I can see that I have formed two rows horizontally like my eyebrows and then I have also formed two columns so from top to bottom and I can see that all of my pieces match up with each other. They are all in pairs so that means that the number four is an even number. Okay, so it's time for you to get started with your independent practice pages. So you're going to head to Google Classroom as always, and you're going to find the assignment there. Today you have two options, just like you normally do. Option one is to print off the worksheets and to do them by hand. Option two is to complete the assignment on Seesaw. Whether you do option one or option two, you are also going to do a presentation video, which means you're going to find that link on Google Classroom to Seesaw where you are going to put your presentation. So even if you do option one, you have to do the video, or if you do option two, then you also still have to do the video. Um, and then I will be looking through those today to give you some feedback. Good luck.